Welcome to Taiwan Brief, an in-depth look at topics impacting Taiwan's future. I'm Donovan Smith in Taichung. Now, this is a this is part two on the topic of KMT's chair race. Part one introduced why this race is a crucial one for not just the party, but the future of Taiwan's democracy. We also looked at the four already declared candidates. Now, in this show, we'll look at the three candidates widely rumored to be about to enter the race. Sean Lian or Lian Shengwen, Daniel Hanguoyu, and Eric Chu or Juli Luan. I'll also talk a bit about three other players to watch who might enter the race, but aren't being as widely discussed, but I think have probably at least been considering a run. Hao Longbin, Zhou Xiwei, and Ma Zhou. I also look into the idea that maybe Ho Yui will join as well. I'll finish on who the CCP might prefer to see win. Now, the other day, Sean Lien was quoted in the papers as saying he was considering the pros and cons of running for KMT chair. Then on Sunday, a Now News report said that he's also in talks with Eric Chu about cooperating. Though it didn't say it was a done deal, nor were the sources of this information entirely clear. But likely one way or the other, he's going to be a player on some level. Now, Lian is the son of former vice president and former KMT chair and twice failed KMT presidential candidate Lian Zhan. Lian Zhan is famous for being out of touch with voters, outrageously rich, and for reaching out to the Chinese Communist Party and deepening ties with them. He's also the one, although he didn't create it, who made the 1992 consensus the cornerstone of the KMT's approach to China. Now, Sean Lian's image is as, a, is as a rich KMT princeling who was educated at, at law at Columbia University. He had a career in investment banking for a while and then was appointed by the then Taipei Mayor Hao Longbin to run the company that manages EasyCard. But he retired soon after for health reasons and didn't leave with a great reputation. The year after that, he was shot in the face while campaigning for a new Taipei City Councilman candidate. It was a mild wound and he recovered, but it did get him a lot of press. In 2014, he ran for Taipei mayor and, like his father, developed a reputation for being out of touch, in spite of accounts I've heard from people that he's a pretty affable character. He lost in a landslide to then independent Ke Wenzhe, who then had the backing of the DPP, which would be unimaginable today. Since then, his only notable achievements are positions in the upper echelons of the party. Now, being raised in the party and having been in its bureaucracy for a while now means he's probably well-versed in its ins and outs, which could be useful for the party. However, most indications, and what little polling is out there, suggest he doesn't have much support though he's not a total nobody like three of the four already declared candidates. It does appear that Johnny Cheng, Jiang Jichan, Han Guoyu, and Eric Chu have more support than he does. So my suggestion for his campaign is to pose him with his father with the slogan, Bring Your Son to Work Day. Okay, one potential heavyweight who could enter the race is Daniel Han Guoyu, the KMT's presidential nominee in the last election. The one word that can be applied to Han across the political spectrum is inspirational. On the Pan Blue side, he was the key inspirational figure behind the, the stunning KMT sweep in the 2018 local elections that saw him elected as mayor of Kaohsiung, which only months earlier, earlier had seemed a DPP bastion. He built an army of followers who were fervently loyal to his brand of ROC na and, uh, patriotism and nostalgia for the 1980s economic boom times, which also happened to be the waning days of KMT one-party rule. He was no less inspirational to both Pan Greens and Taiwan's youth. The horror and fear he provoked led to an outpouring of activism among Taiwan's youth, leading to an astounding voter turnout among vo voters, young voters, I should say, that would have seemed improbable not so long ago and gave President Tsai the biggest win in Taiwan's history. It also inspired largely young activists to build and successfully launch a recall campaign against Han as mayor that in the end saw him deposed. 
To his supporters, who demographically were weighted heavily towards people who were young in the 1980s, and especially towards women of that generation, he was a heroic figure who would magically restore the economic boom times and imagined simpler sensibilities of that era. To his detractors, he was at best an incompetent buffoon, at worst an authoritarian who would sell out Taiwan to Beijing. So he proved to be astoundingly effective at getting out the vote, both for and against him. He managed to pull in more than 1.7 million more votes than Eric Chu got in 2016. But he also managed to mobilize 1.2 million more votes for President Tsai, who won easily that year. Han had seemed like a relative nobody not so long ago. He was a lawmaker back in the 1990s, but that was a time when the number of lawmakers representing Taiwan was roughly the population of a country that diplomatically recognizes Taiwan. His big claim to fame at the time was punching out then-fellow lawmaker and future president Chen Sui-bian, hospitalizing him. Now, after years of obscurity in Yunlin County, he reappeared as the head of the semi-state-owned Taipei Agricultural Marketing Board, and in comments to the city council made a comment about the rabbit goes with the moon about his relations with Taipei Mayor Ke Wenzhe that went viral. He then rather audaciously ran for KMT chair, but lost easily to Wu Duanyi. My theory is that Wu, as punishment, banished him to DPP stronghold Kaohsiung to get him out of the way. But that put him right in the hands of the wily political operator and former legislative speaker Wang Jinping, who was busily uniting the KMT local factions and hungry for power in his own planned presidential bid. Han, a mainlander but not a princeling, now was backed by the Taiwanese factional Pauls and surreptitiously by China's United Front. He ran a positive campaign for mayor that was heavy on often unrealistic but very optimistic plans and nostalgia. He became an overnight sensation and campaigned across the candidate, or sorry, across the country for other candidates, lifting many KMT boats in a crushing year for DPP local leaders. Within months of taking office, there was already talk of him running for president, most notably coming from KMT chair Wu Duanyi who, for long-standing reasons, wanted more than anything to block Wang Jinping. In the end, Wu succeeded in splitting Han from Wang and getting Han to make a presidential run of his own. Having stabbed Wang in the back, he went on to win the primary, with a lot of help from Wu, who repeatedly changed the primary rules to accommodate him. Now, within the KMT rank and file, he continues to have support, In most of the admittedly not terribly reliable polling, he's either second or third in popularity behind Eric Chu and sometimes Johnny Chang, though that is more with the public at large in Zheng's case, not KMT members. But after his crushing defeat in the last presidential election, will he run? Initially, he threw his support behind media personality Zhao Shaokang, but Zhao's party membership is too recent to qualify. With Zhao out of the race, Han began to be more active on social media, curiously leaning in heavily on Bible quotations. We also know he wants the position. After all, he once ran for it. And ideologically, for a deep blue guy like Han, being KMT chair is highly prestigious, like being the Pope in the Church of the Holy One China. He hasn't tipped his hand yet, but he's clearly thinking about it. If he were to run and win, he'd energize the KMT's dwindling base. However, he'd pretty much alienate everyone else. Probably one of the few things the Chinese Communist Party and the Democratic Progressive Party both hope for is for him to take over as the KMT chair. The CCP has already made clear they favored him in the past, and the DPP would love to see him wreck whatever support among independents is left for the party. So my suggestion for his campaign slogan is putting the terror in green terror. So the clear front runner is Eric Chu or Zhu Lilun. Now, according to a now news report on Sunday that came out after doing part one of this series, he is definitely going to run and he'll be making his announcement as soon as this week. He also said he is in talks about it. It also said he is in talks about cooperating with Sean Lien. 
Now, I don't know how reliable that report is, but Chu has been acting like a guy planning to run. Before the Level 3 lockdown, he did a Mind Joe-style listening tour of the country, taking lots of pictures of himself posing with farmers and normal folk. Now, Ju comes from a political family and is considered half mainlander, half Taiwanese. He was educated in the U.S. and was an assistant professor there before taking up a post at NTU in Taipei. He started his political career as a lawmaker and then was a two-term Taoyuan County Commissioner. After a brief term as vice premier, he ran for mayor of New Taipei and won, beating one Tsai Ing-wen. He won again four years later by a narrow margin over the current legislative speaker. In 2015, he was elected as KMT chair in a by-election, running unopposed. Bucking tradition, he decided to throw in his hat to run for president. He wasn't alone. No one of any heft in the party was willing to run. It was obvious the KMT was going to lose this one. So it was left to the relatively unknown and deep blue Hong Xiuzhu to represent the party. As the campaign wore on, it became increasingly clear she was a disaster as a candidate, and pressure mounted to have her replaced. Under pressure from the party, she was denominated and Zhu chosen to replace her. Now that did nothing for the KMT in the polls, and in fact, they continued to decline. He went on to a landslide defeat, not only in his campaign for president, but also his party in the legislature. He then resigned as KMT chair, just shy of one year in office, to take responsibility for the loss. Now, how much responsibility for that loss is on him is hard to say. The election was essentially a repudiation of the Ma administration, which Chu wasn't a part of. He was also the most popular KMT politician in the country at the time. No one else came close. That being said, his campaign was unimaginative and uninspiring. Other than having vaguely KMT stances on issues, pretty much everything he said seemed to designed seemed designed to obscure what he thought rather than illuminate any vision for the country. In many ways, Eric Zhu is the opposite of Han Guoyu. Zhu is hard to get excited about or to hate. He comes across as a harmless, affable sort of guy. His avoidance of taking clear stands on issues whenever he can means it is unclear where he does stand, or even if he stands for anything or not. Perhaps under the surface he's a hardliner, or perhaps a moderate, maybe a pragmatist, or perhaps a reformer. Who knows? In his previous term as chair, he talked about reforming the party. But his short tenure and with the distraction of the election, not much got done or could have under the circumstances. He seems to be acceptable to the old school politicians like Ma Ying Zhou, but he also seems to get along well enough with Johnny Chang. My guess is he's more old school than Johnny Chang, but not quite another Ma Ying Zhou. His current appeal to all sides approach, which has served him well, may evaporate if he has genuine power, but I doubt it as long as a potential run for the presidency looms on the horizon. But there is no certainty in that. He just may just plan to muddle through working on consensus. He is still the second most popular KMT politician in the country after Hoyui, but as noted, not so much because people are excited about him, but because he seems, eh, okay. In the Now News report, he plans to be close to the KMT membership, public opinion, rebuild cross strait communications, deepen the beauty of the KMT, and build mutual trust with Japan. He wants to have better relations with both Beijing and Washington and Tokyo. Now, all that sounds very much like a standard all-things-to-all-people approach. So my suggested slogan for him is taking a firm stand for moms, dumplings, puppies, and kittens. Now, there are three others that the press hasn't been speculating on as much that are still worth keeping an eye on. Former one-term one -term Taipei County Commissioner Joe Shiwei is one. He seems to have a passion for trying to revive his dead political career by putting his name out there. If he joins the race, however, he'd be a long shot. 
Another is former two-term Taipei Mayor Hao Longbin. Traditionally, Taipei Mayor has been a stepping off point for president, but his career has been a total flop since he left office. He lost in a legislative race in Geelong, which was pretty humiliating. He then pivoted to running for KMT chair in 2017, but came in third. He then tried again last year, but Johnny Johnny Chang easily defeated him. Now, he's a princeling of one of the deepest of deep blue families and is the son of the former premier and top general, Hao Po Tsun. Now, if he decides to run, he'll probably lose again. He's been beaten twice, but he may just be desperate enough to get his career back on track. He may yet try again. Speaking of reviving careers, another one to watch is former president and KMT chair Ma ying Now, he's been very active recently in keeping himself in the press and in the public eye. So there are three possibilities as to what he's up to. The simplest is that he's working to keep his influence in the party, so he can do things like undermine Johnny Chang's attempt to ditch the 92 consensus. However, his deep dislike for the DPP's China policies and his ego may just be large enough to contemplate running for KMT chair again, or even president. If he enters the race, it would be very, very interesting to see how the party reacts. Will the utter repudiation of his presidency in 2016 still be in mind, or will they be nostalgic for the good old days when they were in power? I don't know, but he'd definitely be a force to be reckoned with. The other potential candidate looming large is new Taipei Mayor Ho Yui. He's the most popular politician in the country and would probably win if he ran. But so far, he's shown absolutely no interest in doing so. If he does join the race, he'd totally upend everyone's calculations. Finally, who would be the CCP's preferred candidate? The one thing we know for sure is it definitely isn't Johnny Chang. He's the only recent KMT chair that the Chinese leader didn't send congratulations to when he was elected, and the ever-charming CCP mouthpiece Global Times has repeatedly attacked him. They would probably like some, someone like Zhang Yazhong, but of the candidates with a plausible chance of winning, they'd probably prefer Han Guoyu. They have already heaped praise on him, and his ability to sow societal discord plays well into United Front tactics. They may, however, realize how much damage he could do to the KMT, so to keep the KMT viable, they might prefer Eric Chu. All right, that's it for today's program. Thanks for joining us. If you're on social medias, go out there and hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. And uh, if you can, please join us as a patron on patreon.com slash Taiwan Report. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw. Hey, I'm the Taiwan girl. I like my Taiwan girl.